some of this, uh, as, as uh, I, I mentioned to Bing, is, uh, includes uh, uh, a presentation I put together about trying to find the innocent lo assassin's location out in western Nebraska, and I'll talk about that later on uh, as we get into it. But um, the, the reason for this title is that, that Lauren Isley was shaped by his childhood and uh, uh, as, a, as a young man in Nebraska. And a lot of that, a lot of the influences on him had to do with the place itself. And not just the, the place as we see it now, but uh, Nebraska going back in time uh, to worlds that we've never really seen. And so that's what we're talking about here. We talk about traces of a vanished Nebraska, because these past times have left evidence behind. And um, if we look at, here we go, and start moving my slides along. Um, so here's a, a this is a, a physiographic map. It's actually a digital digital elevation model of Nebraska, and it's the shadings represent elevation. Nebraska is a big long ramp, basically, uh, about 5,000 feet elevation over here, down to 1,000 feet here. So it's it's a long gradual drop for the most part. But there's a lot of uh, actual topography in here, and When Isley was in uh, a student at the University of Nebraska, he had the opportunity to go out with field parties. Uh, he was a member of what's called the South Party because uh, the museum, um, the University of Nebraska State Museum, uh, had various collecting parties out in the field, uh, mostly during the summer months. Uh, and they went all over. Uh, up into South Dakota, down into Kansas, over into Colorado, but a lot of time spent out in Western Nebraska. And the South Party was one of these uh, collecting parties that work mainly around in this area. Uh, and so we're going to look most closely at what's happening here. But I wanted to give kind of a uh, an overview of deep time, if you will, and uh, the kinds of past worlds, vanished worlds that can be recovered, at least partially, from the geology and paleontology. And so let's look, oops, here's the, I'm getting ahead of my slides here, actually. Everybody recognizes Chimney Rock out here in uh, Western Nebraska, and this is in the area where they were working. And in fact, it uh, consists of the rocks, you can see the layered rocks here, that have been exposed by erosion and, um, these are the same age rocks that produced the fossils that uh, the uh, South Party was out there collecting, looking in these uh, in these badlands areas, as they're called, where you have exposures of rapidly eroding uh, rocks. Uh, here's a, a, a picture of the uh, the party, and uh, Isley is in the middle here with the hat on. Uh, this is Bert Schultz over here, and and Mylon Stout, if anybody remembers uh, them. Uh, Schultz was a good friend of Isley's and uh, the um, director of the museum for many years. Uh, and Mylon Stout was in the geology department um, for about the same amount of time, I, I think. Um, but anyway, this is a, a, a dangerous looking bunch of desperados out there in the early 30s, uh, 1930s that would be. <laughs> Uh, anyway, well, this is some of the country that they were in. This is the Wildcat Hills looking towards Scott's Bluff. And uh, you can see that this is inspirational in its own right, but it is also evidence for a whole different world uh, that has passed in Nebraska. And to understand something of that, we want to look at uh, some geology. So I'd do a little quick uh, basic geology rehash. This is the geologic time scale. Uh, the Earth uh, the, as a whole is about 4.6 billion years old, uh, but we don't really have any direct record of the earliest parts of it 
the earliest rocks that we have uh, started around 3,800 million or 3.8 billion uh, years old. And there's nothing that old in Nebraska. Um, the record here in Nebraska doesn't start until somewhat later, uh, up in what's called the Proterozoic, the later part of the Precambrian, but still on the order of um, 15 billion or, or um, uh, one and a half billion years uh, ago. And none of that really shows up at the surface. Uh, this large interval down here is the Paleozoic, which means ancient life. And we do have rocks, uh, not this entire sequence, of course, but we have Cambrian and uh, Devonian and um, those things, but they're mostly deeply buried, as I'll show you in a moment. Uh, surface, we do have a little bit of Pennsylvanian and Permian rock in Nebraska. And then we have uh, a little bit of Cretaceous rock. Um, there is, in fact, a Triassic and Jurassic, but it's, again, deeply buried. We, we never see this at the surface. What we mostly see is the uh, Cenozoic rock, the last, the last 65 million years is sometimes called the age of mammals because it's in this time that we have abundant fossil mammals. And that's what Nebraska is especially known for uh, among geologists and paleontologists is a, a tremendous record of uh, mammal fossils, especially in the latter part of the, um, uh, of the record, which is beginning here in the late Oligocene although there's little, a few crumbs actually from the early, uh, I'm sorry, late Eocene, a few crumbs from the early Eocene, but really the record begins here in the late Eocene and then continues right on up to the present. Um, and even that is not simple to unravel, but let's take a look at that. So here's the um, uh, a geologic map of the state uh, done up with cross sections. So you can see what is at the surface and what's underground. And this is that Precambrian that I was talking about before. It's deeply buried. Um, the last time Nebraska had a lot of tectonic activity, mountain building and things like that going on, was about, in very rough terms, one and a half billion years ago. And since that time, it's been consolidated as a continent. Um, and that's why we see the nearly horizontal layers, that is, they haven't been uh, tortured into folds and the kinds of things that form mountains in all that time. And so that's good because we have a, a lot of things recorded here, but it's bad because the youngest things mostly cover the older things and we can't look at them very easily. So this over here, this little patch of blue, is the Paleozoic rocks that we can see at the surface. They're the latest Paleozoic, Pennsylvanian Permian, and uh, there's not a whole lot of it. These little bands in here are the Cretaceous rocks, and they're late Cretaceous. Oh, I just, it, by the way, I should say the uh, these Pennsylvanian Permian rocks are on the order of 290 to 260 million years uh, old, and they're pretty much entirely, but not quite entirely marine because at that time, uh, even though this was continental, it was flooded by shallow seas. Um, and the seas fluctuated across this area, but mostly covered it. Uh, the Cretaceous uh, that we have recorded here is a similar kind of record. This is what's called the Dakota Sandstone, and you see it in a few places where rivers or road cuts have uh, cut into it. If you drive around, uh, drive 80 between Lincoln and, and Omaha, and you look over after you cross the plat, there's a big railroad cut and it goes right through this Dakota sandstone. It was deposited in rivers and deltas that uh, were flowing down into, again, a, an, a sea that covered the um, most of the interior of the continent in the late Cretaceous. And that's really what deposited these layers here. So these are, again, mostly marine. But then on top of that, all this stuff here is the, the Cenozoic, the age of mammals. And you can see that, that we have um, uh, these uh, uh, pink and red layers are underneath or underlain uh, or underlie uh, this vast sheet, it appears, of this yellow material. And we'll talk about what these different layers represent. So that the older beds are only show up where rivers have cut down through the 
this young blanket of material. So let's take a look at these bits of the Cenozoic, which contains this terrific record of fossil mammals in Nebraska. For the most part, we can um, break this into a few big groups. And the main ones that we'll be talking about here are the White River Group, um, which is uh, a number of formations uh, that are Eocene and Oligocene in age. And then the Arikari group, which is a little bit younger. This is this range is in age, say, from about 38 million to about oh, um, 30 million or something like that. And the Arikari here is uh, 28, 25 million, something like that. It's late Oligocene. Um, into uh, Miocene, and then the Ogallala group here is pretty much all Miocene, and it's uh, on the order of maybe uh, 22 million or something like that, uh, and uh, down to about 5 million. And then uh, the Broadwater, we're not going to talk about so much, but this is river deposits uh, that uh, uh, were laid down in Nebraska and kind of strips, really. They kind of blanket some areas, but it's not as, as widespread as the Ogallala, which is all over the place. Um, just before the uh, Ice Age, and then we have Ice Age sediments here, uh, the Pleistocene. As I said, we're not going to worry too much about these. Um, because these were all deposited on land, they weren't deposited everywhere. They're only deposited where the rivers ran or where the uh, water stood or where the glaciers went. And, and so it's kind of a patchwork. And that means that in different parts of Nebraska, you get different sequences that are slightly um, are determined by where things were deposited, where they've been lost to erosion and so forth. And so out here in northwestern Nebraska, Toadstool Park, we see quite a lot of White River Group with some uh, arikaree on top of it. And down here near um, agate fossil beds, we have, uh, this is the upper Niobrara River, uh, a lot of Arikari, and then some Ogallala on top of that. And then over here in, um, uh, this is uh, uh, near, oops, didn't mean to do that. Near Ashfall, uh, we've got White River down here, uh, Arik uh, and then Ogallala up here, not much. I guess this is Arikari in here, and then Ogallala up here, anyway. Uh, and then this is down here in the uh, North Platte, which is down near Wildcat Ridge. So this goes all the way from the White River, Arikari, Ogallala. They're all there to some extent. Um, here's another slice. And this has got a few things marked on it that are important loca locations. This star over here is uh, Ashfall, which is where we find um, uh, Ogallala fossils uh, buried in a thick ash deposit so that they were uh, killed very quickly and in large numbers, the animals just were buried where they died. Um, and it's a phenomenal place to visit, not too far from here, um, but not a place that Isley ever worked or was even, it was discovered in 1971 or thereabouts uh, by uh, Mike Voorhees. Um, this is, the uh, location of um, uh, Ash Hollow, uh, where there's a state park and it's a historic site, um, but it also is a place where these um, Ash Hollow, which is part of the, uh, the uh, Ogallala sediments uh, are exposed. Here we've got Scott's Bluff, which has both White River and Arikari. Uh, and then up here is uh, Agate Fossil Beds, which is mostly the Arikari, and then up here is uh, Toadstool Park, which is White River. Uh, so those are areas that we're going to kind of mention as we go along. And all of these areas are areas that the South Party might have visited. And this area in, in, uh, in particular is where they were uh, doing a lot of their work when Isley was um, uh, out in the field. Um, OK, well, I uh, wanted to show you something to indicate the uh, difficulty of unraveling these layers of rock. It looks like they're simple in those big cross sections of a whole state. Looks like they're just nearly horizontal blankets and uh, it should be fairly easy to figure out. But in 